Hello everyone, in today's Premiere scripting quick tip tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to quickly add keyframes to any property inside of Adobe Premiere. In this case, you can see I have a keyframe opacity going up throughout the video from 0 to 100%. Um, from the beginning of the clip to the end. So very simple, you're going to learn how to apply the keyframes and how to set their values, which will give you all the tools you need to, to set as many keyframes as you'd like. So all we need is a script and some footage. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take my footage here, just grab a little clip from it, and I'm going to bring it into the timeline here. And now we just need to go ahead and do some keyframes to whatever property we want here. So I have my clip. And now for my script, we're going to go ahead and open up a new JavaScript file from whatever editor you like to use. And the first thing we need to do is make a variable for our project. So I'll create a variable called project, and we're going to set that equal to our app.project. Then of course we need to grab the project item itself. So I'll create a variable called project item and set that equal to the project.root item. So now we have a variable for our entire project that contains everything here. Now let's get a variable for our active sequence here. So I'm going to create a variable called active sequence. And that's going to be part of my project and the active sequence. So in order to run this, you're going to need to make sure you select the sequence and then run the script. Then we need to reference down to the actual video clip itself down here on the sequence. So to do that, we need to first get the video track it's on and then the clip number it is. So first I'll get um, a variable called video tracks and I'll set this equal to my active sequence dot video tracks. And this is going to give us a collection of all the video tracks, which in this case we just have three it looks like. So next we can make a variable for our first track that it's on here, track one, and then we're just gonna grab all of our video tracks and the very first video track, so index zero. Then lastly, to grab just the individual clip that we need to access to, we'll create a variable called clip, and we're gonna grab track one, all of the clips, so dot clips, and the very first clip, since we just have one clip, so clip zero. And just to make sure we're getting the right value here, I'm going to write our clip.name. And then I'll make sure I select my uh, sequence here and run the script inside of Premiere. And it looks like I forgot a semicolon. We'll try it again. And now you can see we're getting the correct name, Tom Barclay Multi-Genre Show 01.mp4. Uh, so we have the right clip. Now what we need to do, now that we have our clip, is go into these effect controls grab whatever position, scale, opacity, whatever component we want, and apply our keyframes. So the first step is to grab all of our components. And our components are each one of these values here that we can go into and apply keyframes or adjust the values of. So I'll create a variable called components, and I'll set that equal to my clip.components. And this is going to give us all of the components which aren't necessarily in order. So what I can do is go ahead and say, grab one of the components, like the first component, and we can't actually say name, the, the property name is display name. So if we grab the display name, you can see it's giving us the opacity. If we change it to component number one, we're going to get the motion, and the motion will give us the position, the scale, and other properties. So let's just go ahead and use our opacity. So we know that component zero is going to be our opacity. So we'll just call uh, our opacity component, and we'll set that equal to our components and the very first one. Next, we need to set up one thing, and that is a sort of duration that we want our keyframes to be spaced out. So I'll create a variable called duration, and this is just going to be how long our clip is. So in our case, we want to have a keyframe at the beginning and the end. So the duration just needs to be basically how long the end is. So what I'm going to do is grab my clip.end, and that will give me how long the clip is. So lastly now we can apply our keyframes. What we need to do first is tell, um, we need to tell it that our clip needs to be enabled to have keyframes. So we're going to assume the stopwatch is off and we're going to tell it turn the stopwatch on. In order to do that we're going to grab our opacity component and we're going to grab dot set time varying. So we want to set the time to be varying and set it to true which means it will be able to apply keyframes. So now we have the ability to apply keyframes. Let's go ahead and create two keyframes and change the values of each of them. So what I'm going to do is just grab my opacity component and add a key. And I'm going to do this twice. 
we're going to add two keys, one at the beginning and one at the end. For the add in key method, we only need one argument, and that is the time at which the keyframe occurs. Now, these times are not the time of the actual timeline or sequence. These are the times referring to our clip itself. So we need to be referencing the clip times. So what I want to do for the first key is set it to clip dot in. We can use the in point and the seconds. So grab the in point of the clip and the seconds of that, and that's where we're going to add the first one. For our second key, we're going to grab the in point as well, the seconds, and what we're going to do is add the duration, and we need to add the seconds duration because in Premiere, there's the seconds and the ticks. There's two different time methods, and we're just using the seconds for simplicity. So we're going to add a key at the in point, and then the in point plus our duration, which is the length of it, aka the end. Sometimes you have to get a little bit creative or fancy, but now all we need to do is we can actually run this to test it. What I forgot to do is grab our opacity component property. So we have our opacity component and our motion component, but I need to go in a level further and grab the opacity level here and apply the keyframes to this value. So to do that, I'm just going to grab all of the properties and the first one, because the first property is our opacity. So back in our opacity component, just instead add property zero at the end. So now if we test it out, you can see we have our keyframes being applied and we have the ability to apply them being enabled. Now we just need to set their values so that our keyframes make sense and it's not just random values. So to do this, we're going to grab again our opacity component and we're gonna set value at key. We're gonna do this twice because again, we have a key at the beginning and we have a key at the end. So this method requires two arguments, the first of which is the time and the second is the value. So the first uh, keyframe we created was at clip.endpoint.seconds. That's the time it's at. And we want to set the value to zero. We want the opacity to be zero. And then for the second keyframe, we used our clip.endpoint.seconds and we added our duration.seconds. So that's going to reference our second keyframe. And what value do we want that to be? Let's set it to 100. So now we should be good to run this. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have my sequence selected and run the script. Now if I select my clip here and play it, you can see we're going from zero to 100 opacity at the end. So I hope that tutorial was useful for you guys. Just a quick tip on how to add and adjust keyframes on any properties inside of Premiere Scripting. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Be sure to hit the subscribe button down below for new videos coming out every Monday and Thursday. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.